Hi, so I'm just going to take you through using Microsoft Publisher to create an article. So this will include creating a publisher file, adding some guidelines, and setting up the layout of the document. So from a John Moore's PC, there's a few ways you can access Publisher. You can search for it via the JMU app player, or you can access the Microsoft Office 2013 icon, and you can open that up. And from here, you'll see Publisher 2013, and you'll be able to double click that to open it up. On opening Publisher, you've got the option to actually use some built in templates by clicking this. If you so wish, you could look through those to one that may be suitable. Or you could do what I'd recommend, and that is to use a blank A4 portrait document. Double click to open that. And once you've done that, you'll get a blank screen with a empty A4 sheet and it'll have a simple layout on this already as a guideline. Now to create further guidelines so that maybe if you want to create a two or three column setup you'll need to go to page design and click on that tab and then we have another icon where you can click for guides. If you click on this there are some built-in guides such as two columns with a heading various various other forms what I'd recommend you do is click on the grid and baseline guides at the bottom and this allows you to set up as many columns as you wish so you could set up two columns for instance and you can also set up some spacing between this column I'd probably recommend you increase that a little bit higher than it currently is uh, if you wish you can add some rows to this uh, for this example, I'm just going to add two columns though, and I'm also going to tick the box which says add center guide between column and rows, and that will just put an additional center guideline through the middle. Once you've done that, click OK. You'll now see that you've got two, like, two columns set up on either side of the page, so this will help you when you're drawing text boxes or adding other items to the page so that you can lay them out in a uniform manner. You can also, if you wish, use the ruler to help you set up further guides. So if you look at this, for instance, we've got a ruler at the top and we have one along the side. Clicking on the side as I'm doing here and dragging this in allows you to set and release further um, guidelines if you wish. So for this instance, I'm going to actually add a top ruler just by clicking at the top here and dragging one down and this allows me to create an additional area if I want to have a heading column for instance. It's worth noting at this stage that these guidelines will not be part of your fi finished article so when you save the article perhaps as a PDF to submit the document none of the guidelines that you currently have will appear on the document. So you can now add an additional page and to do this you can Go to the left hand area here where it says pages, you can right click in the empty space and click insert blank page. You'll see that the two columns that you have set up earlier have now also appeared on this page giving you the layout ready to insert text boxes. So now to insert some text boxes is quite straightforward. We have a draw text box here, if you click on that you can then move the cursor down and what you'll need to do is to left click and hold the left click down and then drag the text box to where you want it to be and these guidelines will help you to do that. So if I just click and drag that down to there I can now insert another text box if I wish as the heading and I can, again I can use the guidelines to help me draw that. So now I've got a guide of a couple of text boxes I've started with. I can now right click and I can paste some text that I got from earlier on. And this can go straight into the text box. What you'll notice is, is, is that the text box is actually overfilled with text and you aren't able to see it all. And you, when that happens, you'll get a three little dots here. And what you can do is click on that and you can either create another text text box where you can drop the text into or you can just click into an empty space space in the page and that text box will be drawn 
dumping the additional tax into there. So this in a sense links the two text box together. I can then draw where I'd like that text box to be by enlarging it by clicking on the little dots and squares to the side of it which allow me to increase the size and you can see that this is now linked if you click on that little button there to this text box. If I now insert any additional paragraphing or any further text, you'll see that this has an effect near the text box as they flow through each other.